Welcome back to Relay Gun Adventures and today the Diana 52 gets a proper looking at. So here it is. Some time ago, maybe a year or more, I did a quick walk around of this rifle and I promised to come back, do a full review and some shooting. Went off to the range, forgot all about it and um, I really think it's time I did this old girl some justice. Now this rifle, this model here, the 52 is 30 years old this year. It's had a bit of a refurb around about 2008 and it was Vortec tuned, which was the best thing that ever happened to it. Now as you can see, <coughs> it's long, 44 inches I think, 110 centimetres. The barrel equates to around a foot of that, so 300 millimetres, 30 centimetres weighs in at 8.8 .8 pounds unscoped so it's it's quite heavy now it's a side lever action um, probably the best side lever action rifle ever made in my opinion one of the best air rifles ever made it's um, just gorgeous there's, there's nothing wrong with this rifle at all now this one has been a workhorse it's had a hard life it's been knocked around been out and about you can see that the lack has worn off there from leaning on fences and things over the years there's a few scuffs and knocks and bangs but everything polishes out at 30 years old the blue in is still really good although having said that I am always getting this gun out and wiping it over with oil and checking it out because I just love to get it out and hold it now when I did this before I kind of started off with an apology for saying that it's my favourite rifle a lot. So I'm not going to do that, but clearly I have quite a soft spot for this rifle. It's, um, well, it's superb. Let's have a quick look and we'll do some shooting. So we have this really well-shaped rear stock, which has a Monte Carlo type cheek piece on there. It's quite a big, deep one, but the comb isn't too high. So you could potentially knocking stuff around you could potentially fire this left-handed if you needed to um, I don't think it'd be great but you can it's a two-stage adjustable trigger and it is a beautiful trigger that's a metal blade metal trigger guard there's your hole in there to get your tool in to make your adjustments it's just well it's just perfect what I will say is if you ever take one of these apart you get a job on your hands because there are so many components to that trigger you know, you probably won't be taking one of these apart. Now, like modern underlever rifles, this one has a bear trap, and it's a three-stage lock-off bear trap, very similar to the modern Virarks and the Walthers, Walthers that were. <clears throat> so, three clicks on the way down, two, three, and on that, actually, it's a lot more than three clicks, <clears throat> but there's only three stages to the lock-off. On that last one, the safety engages it is a really nice safety we'll look at that shortly now the breech is very nicely finished and well machined i'm going to put a felt pellet in there because i don't want to uh, fire it dry this is an incredibly awkward position to be doing this from but i'm going to do it anyway <clears throat> now this lever that's popped up, this tiny little piece of bent tin, that's the release. So unlike a lot of the modern ones, which have these nice big cast or machined chunks of metal, this has a little piece of tin that you just press down, goes in really nicely. Lever goes back, the bridge closes, the lever's hollow, so it also covers up the workings as well. Clicks into place, ready to go. Now the safety, is on the back of the action there you can see the little little switch that you just flick up incredibly easy to flick back up and of course it's a resettable safety unlike a lot of the under lever rifles we'll just find a safe spot for that now i don't know if the microphone will pick that up but it's not quiet it's quite a loud gun which um does limit its use backyard blinking to be honest 
it does come with open sights. Um, because of the age of this gun, these aren't fiber optic, but they are very well made, very easy to adjust sights, as you'd expect on a rifle that's probably five, 600 quid. Foresight there, which is also adjustable. It runs up and down on that ramp. So you can really tune this thing in quite well. And of course, scope rail for a scope, and this is a Nikko Starling Mount Master. This, um, this is quite a good one actually, it's a 3 by 9 by 40 it's not the illuminated rectangle one that they do, I hate those, but that's just me. And it is um, a very serviceable scope, it's had a couple of scopes on over its time, but this is the one that's currently on there and it suits it quite well. The checkering, because it's an older gun, these are pressed checkerings, but they're nice and grippy. Um, if you run a duster over this, which I do quite frequently, it picks it up and catches it because they're deep enough to do that. Same on the pistol grip, very nice. You can see the timber itself is really, really nicely figured. It's a really nice bit of timber. It's really well finished. Because it's knocking on, some of the bluing is wearing a bit thin in places, um, but a little bit of oil and it's not an issue. I don't have any rust on it and I don't intend to. Now the weight of this gun means it's not something you want to go, say, stalking with. You're not going to wander around for hours with this. It's not to be practical, it's just too much, too much weight. Um, even the sling, it digs into your shoulder after a while. It's really an ambush style hunting gun where you find yourself somewhere comfortable to sit. Set yourself up and wait for your prey. From a target shooting point of view, it is more than adequate. It's very accurate um, because it's tuned. Uh, this one has virtually no recoil, uh, which is another advantage of going down that route. Um, but out of the box, when it was new, it didn't have a huge amount of recoil, um, much less than some other guns in its price range. I would say, um, on balance, and I've already said it, I think this is one of the best air rifles ever made. Now, sadly, Diana have decided to drop it from the range. Um, I think it was last year, or possibly the year before. They're still around, they're still out there, you can still pick them up. Uh, I've seen them advertised for the sort of five, six hundred pound marks that they're not a cheap rifle. Now I'm told by a reliable source that Dyna have shifted some of their manufacturing out of the European Union, which usually means China, and in this case it does mean China. So if you are going to buy a Dyna rifle, look at it carefully and make sure that it says that it is made by Dyna in the EU or Germany and not designed by Diana and made in China. Now, having said that, there are some really, really good Chinese air rifles, and I've got a couple here, and they are excellent. But they're budget air rifles, they come in at less than 200 quid, less than 150 quid in some cases. Now, I don't think that's a bad price to pay for a Far Eastern air rifle that is well built and accurate. I would be really upset if I bought what I thought was a German air rifle for a lot more money and that wasn't the case. I'm not saying that is the case, I'm just saying keep an eye out, be vigilant. Now, I'm gonna go and shoot some targets. Um, I might be in a little while, <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll be right back.
So that's the target shooting out of the way. Uh, for reference, haven't chronoed this recently, but um, it generally comes in around about 11 foot 6 to 11 foot 8, depending upon the pellets. Um, it, well, I've never thought of this as pellet fussy, um, but actually when I got to thinking, I've only really ever fired JSBs and H&Ns and field trophies at that, so it's it's not had much of an opportunity to um, play up on cheaper pellets. Maybe that's something that I'll try. Anyway, as I said, um, it's an accurate air rifle. It's a reliable air rifle. Um, if it was half the weight, it would be the perfect air rifle for, air rifle for every occasion. Um, but I, I just love it. And say, 30 years old, it's still in good nick. I have a Virarc HW77, which is a little bit younger, um, and which is a very nice rifle that I'm very fond of. But this one does pip it to the post for first prize. Now, side levers. Well, I don't know what happened with side levers. It was a good idea. It just didn't seem to sort of make it into the mainstream. You know, Diana still offer a couple, the 48, the 54. Um, there's a couple of um, Chinese side levers around. Um, I just can't think of any others. Um, Webley did the Tracker and the Osprey. The Tracker and the Osprey were nice looking rifles. Um, disappointing on power. Always were, you know, and if you pick one up, you'll probably find the same thing. Eight foot pounds, maybe less. So this does really win hands down across the board. Now it's big, it's heavy. It's quite a masculine looking gun. I mean, to be honest, I'd say it's a it's a man's rifle. And when I want to say that, I mean, it's probably not for small frame teenagers or petite ladies. Now, I've just said a whole bunch of words there that probably aren't acceptable in polite society anymore these days. But I don't care because it is what it is. It's a big, heavy rifle for a man to lug around. Now, there are women that are more masculine than me, have more facial hair than me and bigger muscles. Yeah, great. Grab yourself one of these. But generally speaking, this isn't going to be for kids or ladies. Now, they do make smaller versions. Um, 48 is a, is a sort of cutback version. Um, there are other guns in the Dyna range that... Uh, are more suitable for smaller frames and there's other guns that aren't made by a diner <laughs> but bottom line is I like this this is always going to be prominent in my collection 30 years down the line no issues um, 2008 Vortex Tune has made this into something superb there's always something very good anyway time to stop I've had a blast I've had my old diner 52 out and in fact it's staying out, and I'm going out now. So I'll catch up with you again soon. Please like and subscribe. It's a big thank you to all those who have liked and subscribed. And um, watch this space. I'll be back soon. Bye for now.